Hi and welcome back. Uh, today's webinar subject is the Engine Details Worksheet of Motex M130 GP Lite TCU. Okay, so we're just uh, we're going to do a series of these webinars just breaking down the initial setup on the GP Lite um, package and the first couple I'm going to cover here is the Engine Details and uh, ECUIO. Alright, so I'll just show you where we are in the package. We'll just flick between this presentation and the real package um, backwards and forwards so you can see where we are. Okay, so here you can see I have a package open and connected to an ECU and it's a GP Lite uh, version. So normally our tuning would be done on these range of worksheets here, but we're not at that point. So uh, we're at the point where after you've had the vehicle wired, uh, you need to enter all the details of the vehicle to make the startup much easier and to help you with your tuning. So, so we're going to be covering off these two pages here, which is on under the initial setup workbook and these two um, pages or worksheets here, engine details and ECU IO. Alright, so pretty simple. First couple of parameters to look at here, engine displacement. The ECU uses this to help it calculate the actual airflow into the engine. So it's actually looking at the efficiency map to see uh, how efficient the engine is. So if the efficiency map number was 100, it would then look at the engine displacement and so for example in this example here every two revolutions it would be assuming 4.8 liters of air was induced obviously it's looking at things like air temperature but by telling the ECU the size of the engine this helps it to calculate or well, it's part of its calculation as to exactly how much air is being induced at the time that's easy. Number of cylinders, can't get that wrong, just enter that. The next one's your fuel properties calibration. So we need to tell the ECU uh, whether this is on methanol, ethanol, diesel, gasoline, and that way it can work out how, um, how much pulse width to open the injectors for. So you can imagine if we had a 1000cc injector there and it was for a certain, you're after a certain air fuel ratio or a certain lambda, the ECU needs to do a volume calculation for how much fuel is required for any given aim uh, lambda value. So if it's uh, gasoline versus methanol for example, of course it needs t over t twice as much methanol by volume compared to gasoline by volume to to a obtain the same lambda actual lambda reading so we need to tell the ECU what fuel you're using uh, I'll flick to live here and just show you if we want we can just click the drop down here and all, most of the common fuels are here but if you've got something special that you really want to enter in the exact details of you can go to manual and here are the the specifics of uh, of the fuel that you can enter from the data sheet from the fuel itself but most of the time uh, most of you will probably be on gasoline so that's any um, gasoline or race fuel that's based on gasoline it's near enough to use that that parameter like that okay So uh, the next one we're going to go to is the fuel pressure default. Now this is quite important because if for some reason the fuel pressure sensor isn't working, you should actually always have a fuel pressure sensor on on your engine. Um, this what this does for the ECU is it tells it uh, obviously the fuel pressure, and so for any given fuel pressure, if you have very high fuel pressure, it doesn't need the pulse width doesn't need to be as long. Uh, compared to very low fuel pressure. So if the fuel pressure drops for some reason, the M1 automatically extends the pulse width to make sure that the correct volume of fuel goes in. All right, so if you don't have a fuel pressure sensor or your fuel pressure sensor connector fails or the sensor fails and the sensor goes into error, 
then it will use this default value here as the base fuel pressure. All right, and so that way it will model what fuel pressure would be and uh, that in conjunction with the next parameter will allow the ECU to kind of guess what the fuel pressure would be for any given situation. In the case of a boosted engine, if the regulator is attached, the fuel pressure regulator is attached to the inlet manifold, then of course the fuel pressure will go up and down with boost. So if the fuel pressure sensor is in error or you don't have one, and you dial in the base fuel pressure, in this case the example is 50, and you tell it the regulator type is manifold pressure referenced at one bar of boost, then the chances are that the fuel pressure is likely to be somewhere around 64, 65 pound. So the M1 will assume that what, that's what the fuel pressure is, and then apply the appropriate compensations to the injector uh, calculations to deliver the correct amount of fuel. Alright, let's just flick back again and look at that. So um, you will have seen in the presentation there we were in PSI in this particular setup here we're in KPA. Uh, a lot of you are PSI and if you want you can actually change any of the parameter units here to be in something that's common for you. So if you right click on here and go to active item and then you can go to properties and we can simply change this to PSI. All right, and you might set this regulator up. The base, this is the fuel pressure when the engine is not running. Uh, so key on, engine off with the fuel, fuel pump running. So we might set that to 50 pound. All right, and the next parameter I was talking about is the manifold pressure referenced. So does this have a hose on it going to the inlet manifold? If it doesn't, so maybe it's an, um, um, a naturally aspirated engine and you don't have a hose on it referencing the pressure to the regulator, then that's what you would install. All right, simple as that. All right, so um, top dead centers, that's the next thing we need to specify. And in this new GP Lite package, we have a top, we've built a top dead center wi wizard. So this allows you, if you've got an uncommon engine that you don't know what all the top dead centers are, then you can actually write the firing order in the software here. And with it highlighted, press Q, and it automatically writes the top dead center numbers into the parameters over here on the right hand side. All right, same with the bank. So in the case of a bank, if it's a two bank engine like a V8, we need to tell it which cylinders are on bank one, uh, which, is the, which is the bank that contains cylinder one normally, and then which cylinders are on bank two. And again, if you just press Q when you're highlighted in that area, that will change, update the actual parameters over on the right. There's some help over here to step you through that as well because that's a completely new feature for, for M1. All right, so the, the reason we have this uh, in M1 and it's used is because it's not like the M800 where when you wire up an M800 to the injector and coils, you wire up them in firing order. Now, when you wire up an M1, you wire it up at each injector drive to match the same cylinder. So injector one goes to cylinder one, injector five goes to cylinder five. So we just allocate each ignition coil and each injector to the same number, same input number. And then we tell the ECU where the top dead centers are and the ECU will fire the appropriate drive at the appropriate time. All right, let me show you what that looks like over here. All right, so maybe I'll just give you an example here. Maybe cylinders one, two, and three are bank one. And it's quite common on some six cylinders to have a two bank exhaust. So for example, you have the first three cylinders have uh, have a, an exhaust manifold, and then the back three cylinders have an exhaust manifold separately, and you could run two lambda sensors. So you can run that as a two bank engine. So we can save in this example that four, five, and six, and we can just fill out twos on the other, it doesn't matter for six cylinder. These are now bank two. Now if we look over here at the bank allocations, this is the actual parameters themselves. If I press Q, it's gone and automatically updated that for us. The same here, if we were going to change the firing order, 
going to, to put a different camshaft or you've got a different engine with a, a firing order that's slightly different then um, you just enter the firing order in here let me save this as a new file let's save this as a webinar okay so we might uh, could be a Nissan engine or something like that one two three four five and six and now while we're highlighted in here if we press Q if you have a look here all the top dead centers will all change and because we're online that's a major a major change you'll see anything with a red flag here what that means is that we need a major reset that's why we've gone red up here and so if I press enter now what control s we've now reset the ECU all right so that's top dead centers and banks now last thing to talk about is the the method that we use for throttle position mapping now this is not going to be that many people with this kind of setup but if you do want to do throttle based mapping then we use a thing called the init manifold pressure estimate so it's easier if we go over to the main software again okay so there's a couple of parameters to deal with here. The first one is the inlet manifold pressure mode or NFL, in, inlet manifold pressure mode. So what this does is when it's this is telling us what happens with the sensor if it goes into error. So in automatic mode if the sensor is working well, the map sensor and say this is just an ordinary engine, standard camshaft and a normal plenum, then in automatic mode uh, as long as the sensor is alive, everything is normal, you're, you're doing your tuning based on manifold absolute pressure. If the sensor goes into error for some reason, uh, so you have a problem, connector falls off, wiring problem, sensor fails, then rather than just using one default uh, number like in the M84, uh, we have this table here that you can populate so that if the sensor has failed, it then comes back to this table. Now this table is called the Inlet Manifold Pressure Estimate and this can't work off Inlet Manifold Pressure Sensor because that's now failed so it works off throttle position and engine speed here. So the example we've got here is a, an engine that is turbocharged and we filled out the numbers that we would expect or you know guess as good as we can that it would have at any given throttle position and any given engine speed. Now they're obviously not going to be perfect but um, you can fill these numbers out to what you estimate the inlet manifold pressure would be. Now you can actually get them, can get them quite good by using the Q function. Now what that does is it doesn't quick lambda uh, like the gold box, it does multiple things in an M1. So Q is like an auto-tune feature. If I press the space bar we can see that we're down to the live site and I can adjust my simulator here to say put the, map, the uh, throttle position at 40% and our engine speeds at zero. And if I press Q and you do this when you have a map sensor that's running so this is some a way of uh, filling out this table if we have a look at our manifold pressure sensor if I press F5 we shortcut back to the main tuning screen and our manifold pressure sensor currently is reading 102 so we go back to initial setup and we're here so if I press Q the software will look up what the man manifold pressure is and then write that into the table all right so that's written in 101.6. All right, so you can actually go uh, while the engine's in normal condition and the manifold pressure sensor is working and go to each of these locations and press Q and actually produce a reasonably good map that the ECU will use should the map sensor fail. Okay, so that's what it's normally used for this table. Now, if you decide you want to do uh, throttle based tuning, so that's tuning that are, that's not based on manifold pressure but it's actually based on throttle then the way you do that is uh, change the setup parameter to be estimate 
all right so the inlet manifold pressure channel now will be derived from so this is when you say have a multi throttle body engine or an engine with a very very large camshaft where where manifold pressure readings are not useful so you want to base it on on throttle position so in this case we actually want to configure this quite differently we effectively just want to turn throttle position into manifold pressure so that when you view it in the ignition and and the efficiency screens I'll show you here all right so on our ignition map we have manifold pressure and on our efficiency table we have ma inlet manifold pressure but this isn't the inlet manifold pressure sensor necessarily it's called the inlet manifold pressure channel so the inlet manifold pressure channel can either be derived from the map sensor itself or from the throttle the inlet the throttle position let me get that right for you the inlet manifold pressure estimate table all right so the manifold pressure channel can be derived or can be uh, can come from this table here so when you just want this axis here to read one to one to this to be 20% throttle 70% throttle 100% throttle all right and in this case it'll be a naturally aspirated engine or an engine that's only going to 100 anyway because that's all you've got on a on a throttle uh, is a hundred percent on a throttle position so in that particular case then what you do is click A for axis here and we can just clear the table and we just make what's called a one-to-one -one. so we can just type in zero and one hundred and we turn off the engine speed axis altogether and so what this means what this will give us is basically a uh, at zero throttle we have zero kPa on the axis and 100 throttle we'll have 100 kPa all right I know that's a little confusing but what that will give you here is at zero percent throttle it'll read zero inlet manifold pressure and hundred percent throttle it'll read hundred percent uh, 100 kPa so that effectively turns the efficiency which is your fueling and the ignition maps into throttle based all right let me see if I've checked everything off here yep there's a little this is basically a screen showing you that exact thing that we've just been through all right so uh, we're using Q to tune and this is the method that the M1 uses to have the or to allow the tuner to tune via throttle position rather than manifold pressure all right so uh, let's move on to our input outputs so the uh, GP light package is similar to the M84 in that some of the sensors are predefined so those same sensors that were predefined in an M84 are predefined here in an M1 GP light or M130 GP light so they're already allocated AT1 and AT2 is your air temp and coolant temp and AV1 and 2 4 and 5 are your throttle map fuel pressure and oil pressure so they're already mapped you can't do anything about that that's locked in the software and it's then up to you to allocate the other sensors that you want to use and um, to do that there's two places you can do that and I'll show you where they are now so we go back to the live software the place I use the most often this is the first way of configuring your IO is in here tools edit input output resources so in here basically every channel that can be configured is listed all right so that's every sensor input or output is here all right so for ex and go back what's not here of course is the map sensor throttle position sensor fuel pressure and oil pressure so all all the sensors that are pre allocated aren't actually in this screen now if you actually want to want to see where they are I can show you a way of doing that if you go to help the M1 actually writes a wiring diagram for you on the fly so if we go help firmware wiring it's appeared on my other screen I'll drag it over all right so we can see here 
that that's a the same as the screen I, sh I had on the other page there a capture from that so for example if we look at uh, AV8 we can see that's on pin B22 and there's nothing allocated so what we might do is just to show you how this works I'll go and allocate an exhaust temp sensor there so tools edit input output resources now I can find exhaust temp there it is there if you want to get to the bot get quickly to where the sensor you're looking for you can just start using the search so we've got exhaust temperature bank one collector we allocate that to our input so this might be where the wiring guys uh, told you he's wired it into AV8 alright you can see that uh, we're due for a reset the flag here tells you that we're going to reset uh, so we'll close this before we reset I'll show you the firmware wiring and you'll see now that's updated so pin B22 AV8 is now exhaust temperature bank 1 okay and control S to save and we get a reset alright so the second place that you can check or configure your input output your IOs is on our initial setup workbook on the second worksheet so we have a list of everything here and it's the same process you'll see here now if we go to exhaust temp that that's allocated just space that out to AV8 so you can come into either of these two places to configure your inputs and outputs alright so that's it for this uh, webinar uh, more information obviously on our website uh, the software for GP Lite is again on our site under software and latest res releases if you want to talk to a dealer there's a section dealers and your area is there and of course we've got webinars if you're not viewing this webinar from our website uh, so from YouTube or something like that if you want to see some more webinars uh, under training section webinars and M1ECU thanks for listening we'll catch you next time